Welcome back to Free Media. I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. In a recent episode of The View, things got spicy when Sarah Haynes called out Kamala Harris for missing chances to separate herself from Biden during her recent media tour. Haynes felt Harris could have been clearer about what makes her different as she gears up for the 2024 race. But Sonny Hostin and Whoopi Goldberg weren't having it. They jumped in to defend Harris, with Hostin throwing down about the Biden administration's wins and loyalty. The whole debate got heated very quickly. Let's watch. In, I wouldn't go flawless on it because I think there were some missed opportunities and I think what people who are not are criticizing back what you know what their problems are is I don't think they fully understand they know why she's not Donald Trump but they don't know why she's not President Biden and I think she needs to be both of those things in an election of change and I also think aside from beating Donald Trump she needs to be very clear to the voters as to why she wants the job but don't you think they know that she definitely isn't Donald Trump probably wasn't turning on his policies they were turning on the fake news of him being too old to do the job but the reality is the majority of voters didn't want Joe Biden back, so she needs to signal how she's different. She can keep plenty of the but good of you. Really he has run. He, but the Biden you think that because you're a registered wait, wait Democrat who loves Joe Biden. Biden. No, this is statistics. These are facts. The Biden administration has been one of the most successful administrations successful in decades. Successful means that's a fact. But successful Hold is on, a relative guys. term. How did Sonny Hostin go from asking Kamala Harris the question about what she would have done differently? as a member of the Biden administration in the rearview mirror looking back to actually the Biden administration was flawless and Kamala Harris doesn't have to separate herself from him at all. And I want to drink some coffee so I can spit it out when Whoopi <laughs> Goldberg says that he's not too old to do the job. Isn't that what she said? That, yeah, that Biden uh, look, is not too old. Look, you can be the most loving of Joe Biden, supportive of what he's done in the tank for him and still right concede that he is obviously too old to be doing this job. That, that's what we just, that's what just took place, was a massive concession across elite media and the Democratic Party that there is no way he can do this for four more years. There's probably no way he can do it right now. Is he doing it right now as no. all hell breaks loose in the Middle East? Are we hearing from him? Is he meeting with our allies to stop World War III from happening? I, I wish someone who didn't need, you know, naps at certain times of the day or was only competent between uh, certain hours, uh, having that person in charge of things um, seems not ideal to me, but what do I know? Um, yeah, it, it's, it's not a change election because Biden's vice president is the one running and it's impossible for her to separate herself from the administration, but she hasn't really tried either. What she has basically promised is continuity. Um, continuity with Biden, not even continuity with herself. She's actually broken from where she was last time she was a candidate for the presidency in 2019. She has denounced her own policy position. So then what do you have left? What you have is continuity with Joe Biden. You have to hope that what people, the only thing people didn't like about Joe Biden was that he was just way too old to be president. That it really is what she has to hope. But now, but even people in the view deny that that's the reality. Yeah, and I don't think that that's solely the reason people no. didn't like Joe I think Biden. it is a big reason. But. It's definitely part of it, but obviously there were a lot of policy disagreements for, between the American people and the Biden administration over the past four years. Even Kamala Harris herself has acknowledged that prices are still too high, that inflation is a problem, that the economy hasn't really been lifting up the middle class. That's the number one issue for voters. That's going to be a huge hill for her to climb. And these women on The View are just denying reality when they suggest that the Biden administration has been so unbelievably successful. And Joe Biden, by the way, the undercurrent of all of this is that when you watch the public statements that he does give, he is completely throwing Kamala under the bus. He knows that she probably doesn't wanna be too tightly wedded to his administration and he's making it impossible for her to run away. He comes out in this surprise White House press briefing where he praises her for being his right-hand man in all of the decision-making processes throughout all of the major policy decisions made as part of the Biden-Harris administration. And then when she spouts off about Ron DeSantis supposedly politicizing the response to Hurricane Milton, 
Joe Biden pops out again as she's doing one of her big yeah, media he blitzes. Yeah, he did uh, throw her under the bus there. And he says, well, actually, I've been talking to Ron DeSantis on the phone because I'm the president, and he's actually been doing a great job, and we're both happy with each other's response. So Kamala just looked like a total fool who was left completely out of the loop from the president who's like one foot in the grave. She does have... She's trying to accomplish something that we should concede is difficult, right? It, especially in American politics, it is not the norm in the last, you know, however many decades for um, for someone to succeed someone from their own party in terms of like getting elected, right? Bush did that after Reagan. Um, you had you know 12 continuous years of Republicans holding the presidency, but that doesn't happen that much because you just get sick of the incumbent, whoever they are, whatever they represent. And also on the global scale, um, you know incumbents are getting crushed all over Europe. The um, frustration with uh, economies and immigration and kind of managing the post-pandemic landscape uh, is resulting in a lot of turnover, a lot of dissatisfaction. Uh, again, regardless of ideology, right? The conservatives finally got tossed um, in Britain after holding on for forever there. And but now the but now the kind of like neoliberal centrists are in trouble from both sides in France. You know, it's just a frustration with the incumbents. And so that favors the Donald Trump, actually, right now, because he's not the incumbent, even though he has served as president in the past. So it, it's, it's an unlikely thing to accomplish anyway, to have her actually win and succeed Joe Biden. And I don't want to be too unfair to her campaign, because really, this is going almost as well for her as I possibly could have imagined it going. I, I wondered if they made this substitution, if her polling would be worse than Joe Biden's, because she's a totally untested qual uh, quantity on the national scale. She's not doing worse than Joe Biden, so that is an accomplishment, and it's pretty close, and it could go either way. So, you know, maybe they, they had something there. But she is doing worse in some of the key Democratic-based demographics. Yes, doing worse with the, black men and men in general and, and immigrants. And in general, and, yeah. yeah, and so she's trying to now run a campaign where she's winning over rural voters, which I can tell you how well that's going to go. Um, probably not very well if Tim Walz's v version of loading a shotgun is any indication. Um, but yeah, I mean, to be, to be fair to your point, not only are the incumbents struggling globally right now, but she's also running a truncated campaign. She only had 100 days until November when she took over the top of the ticket. That's a difficult task. And that's why I've been saying since they put her in there, a lot of people were very uh, critical of the decision. They thought it should have been Gavin Newsom or Gretchen Whitmer. But if you have both of these components where you're running as the incumbent of an administration that's not very popular and you have only 100 days instead of a full year to run as a candidate, those people would be smart to stay out of it because they know that the odds are stacked against them. And the Democratic Party is probably thrilled that they can kind of kill two birds with one stone. They assumed probably that they were going to lose this election anyway. Now, if Kamala loses, they can say, well, she had her shot, you did your thing, and now they never have to look at her for a top spot ever again. She can be basically relegated to the dustbin of Democratic history. I think that is what will happen to her if she loses, but she could win. She it's could gonna be win. close. We shall see. More free media coming up after this.